Right, so we've um, given it to first coat of acetone, both parts of first coat of acetone. They've all dried up um, and evaporated. Um, and what's the first thing you notice is it really emphasises the um, layers um, from the printing, so it really emphasises all the defects. The other thing um, I need to mention really is why I sort of finally ended up on using um, this colour, the grey filament. Um, actually, I'll put a link in for the filament manufacturer or supplier I'm using at the moment um, because it is a great filament. It sounds very nicely, uh, prints well, and um, the actual quality of the filament is very, um, very good as well. The extrusion, the diameter is very um, consistent as well, so it's a good filament. Um, anyway, um, so great. I, I have tried um, black, um, I've tried white. Um, patterns, um, moulds, and I've tried a neutral mould. I think the neutral is probably the worst because it's almost like a transparent um, surface, so it's like a translucent, transparent surface. So when you're sanding, sometimes you're sanding and you're looking at things or faults actually underneath the surface and not actually on the surface, um, which was a problem. Um, but the grey it seems to be the perfect sort of in between, um, especially when you put a um, when it shines up like this, when you put the acetone on, when we sand this down, the idea is that, you know, what you want to do is sand off all the shine. Once you've got all the shine off, you know, you, you're back down to smooth um, material. So, um, obviously, when you start sanding, you'll be sanding off the tops, the peaks, yeah? Um, and you'll be able to see the, the ringing, as well as the, um, the valleys of the extrusions, um, as a shiny against the mat. Um, so, you just carry on sanding until you just remove, remove that. Um, and then you just do the same process. So um, once we've got that flatted off um, with the, I normally start at 240 grade paper, um, dry, um, and uh, work my way down to about um, 1200 um, grade wet and dry, maybe even further um, wet and dry. But um, so as I was saying, um, grey is an ideal colour to be working with, um, with regards to, you want something that's going to really highlight all the faults, you don't want a colour that's going to hide the faults, you want a colour that's going to really show the faults, because uh, once you've finished and you've waxed it all up and you start casting your parts, the last thing you want to do is have some ringing showing, I mean that's a brilliant example of ringing, and that's really bad, that, that ringing there, it's awful. Um, and like I say, before we, before I, I acetoned it, I knew there was ringing there, but not as bad as it looks there, so we know we need some work um, on that. So, um, tools wise, um, I find these, um, I don't know, um, popsicle, bloody pop sticks, or I mean, I, I bought these from the, I think they're used by the doctors for uh, examining patients, uh, so I go from the same people I get my comps and stuff from. Um, and the important thing to do, I'll take the, take the flat off, so I'll put a flat on the end, and I'll also actually sand down the profile, I don't know whether you can see. So it goes down into a thin shape. And the idea of that is when I'm sanding, I'm, I don't want to be sanding like this. Yeah. I want to be sanding and getting the whole, getting the whole, as much of the flat surface following the profile and the constant profile of the, um, of the, the part I'm sanding, the contours. Yeah. So you want to, whenever you're sanding stuff, you want to keep trying to get as flat as you can. Yeah. So you don't want to be, doing this or doing it with your fingers, especially with the coarse stuff. You know, whatever you do, don't use your fingers. Um, apart from around the fiddly bits, which you have to, um, but whenever possible, I always try and use as big a flat surface as I can. Um, and it seems to work really well. So, um, it's just sanding, really. Um, tips for sanding, just be methodical. Um, don't daydream. It's, 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 you know, it's very easy to, you know, actually just daydream and just end up sanding stuff you don't actually need to sand. So the idea is only sand what you need to, only re remove the material you actually need to and everything else just leave, you know. So um, I like to like just sit, do like a little section uh, and be really methodical with it. So I'll do that section, get that right and I'll work right around the uh, parking plane. Um, obviously the parking plane doesn't need to be as good as that surface there but I like to get the parking plane the same, to the same level uh, or finish as the surface. I just found that it takes out um, unexpected variables. You know, if you've got like a bit of a ridge happening on here, when you put the two pieces together, 
um, the last thing you want to do is have the leading edge slightly play up or slightly down. I'm only saying that through you know stuff I've learned through experience, you know, because that's that's printed. So you know, it's not it's not like we've we at the moment the the, the fit is looking like that really, which is not too bad really. Um, so it's not like we've taken a um, a plug and done a mould around it. This is like printed freehand, you know, it's printed and independent from a plug, and we ask a lot of things to happen and come come right at the end. Um, so it's a good indication how well your your core and your part is doing is, is the actual um, parting plane and how that fits. So I do, I, I didn't used to bother um, finishing that to the same level, but I do now because I think it makes all the difference. Um, you know, you look after your mould and um, make a nice job of it, it's going to look after you, I think. And that's the kind of consensus I get from a lot of people who, who, who are doing like the more traditional mould mold making, you know. What you put in is what you get out at the end of the day. So let's make a start. Um, I'm just going to do a bit and then I'll put it on time lapse. It's, you know, it's nothing worse than watching someone sand. And I'll perhaps discuss it at the end once it's once you know once I've done it. I'll just give you hints, maybe tips and tricks that I've used, um, and I've, I'm learning as I, I go along. So like I say, I, I normally start um, on a, a section and do a section at a time. Um, so sanding, sanding, really. Try and keep it. Obviously, try and keep your um, try and keep the surface as, as close as flat as possible. Um, and what you find is, as you can see, hopefully, let me zoom in a bit. Um, as you're sanding, oops. Okay, as you're sanding, the um, the dust actually goes falls into the valleys. So it's a really good indicator of where you need to sand. Um, so we need to get that all, all out. Um, so um, I suppose that the word you want to use or the description you want is sand of purpose. Yeah. So you sand in a particularly area for a reason. Because I mean, I've, I've, it happens to me, you know, I get in. You know, it's sanding, but it's actually really important to concentrate on what you're doing. Um, I quite enjoy it. I quite. It's very therapeutic after a day's work. You know, from my my day job. Um, and it's it's one of those things you just need to be patient at and take your time. You can see it removes sands really easily. Um, let's try to get that in frame. It sounds really easy. And again. Um, Handy things to have around you while you're sanding is a brush to brush off the bits and bobs and my wire brush. You can find that in the mess now. So the sandpaper actually does last uh, quite long, um, even when it's dry like this. Um, but obviously, um, you know, just every now and then, clean up, get a brush, and I'll, you know, you can get a lot more. Wear out the sandpaper. Now, I, did, I have tried with a Dremel, um, and the thing you can do with something like a Dremel, but you need to get that speed right, right down. Okay, um, if it's spinning too fast, um, these are going to melt the plastic rather than sand. So you want an abrasive action rather than a, <laughs> a melting action. So um, I have just found that it works really well. I think I've got a lot more control of, of, of things and what's going on, um, just doing it by hand. Um, uh, as you can see here, we're almost there, you know, and this first 240 is, will take the longest to do. It's the most time consuming um, part is the 240 um, sanding, because um, you, you, you end up actually removing quite a lot of material. Well, no, I say a lot of material, but you need to get all these digs out. Um, Sometimes I won't, you know, if it's too deep, I'll, I'll leave it. Um, you know, I, I, I normally see how I get on. Um, and obviously, being careful on our on this edge here, so be careful not to roll over our edges onto our mould. Because um, we want to keep that edge there nice and crisp. Um, in a perfect world, you wouldn't, need, you wouldn't want to touch it. It would just be machined aluminium. You know, um, and job done. But 
with the technology I've got available, um, this is this is this is what I found works. Um, so it's not hard. It's just time consuming, um, but therapeutic. Okay, you can see. Um, hopefully there, that's in focus. Hopefully, just make sure that's in focus. But yeah. Um, so we've got a nice contrast between the shiny with the ridges and what we just sounded. Yeah. And I've been yapping and talking while sounding, so it hasn't taken, taken next to no time um, to get that first get the first pass done. Um, probably you can see there's all shiny bits in there where it's low in the valleys. Um, and I've probably sound that down a little bit more, but I, I won't. I just, I just want to get this nice flat even surface. Um, with no high points, so when I put the two parts of the mold together, it's, it's where or as close as it, 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 it should be um, to the real thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carry around all around the um, parting parting surface. Um, this is the the, the foreman I've got into doing it, and I'll leave this bit um, for last railing, so I can really take my time and be careful with this. So the most important thing is don't roll your edges, yeah, because otherwise you're going to make that. Sort of seam when you put the, when you cast your part, you can have like a a lot more um, flashing and a lot thicker flashing if that's rolled. Yeah, you want to keep it nice and crisp, um, and you'll get a really clean, um, very thin flashing, bit of flashing, very easy to remove. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with some time lapse and go around, and then I'll talk before I do that bit. Okay, so I've done done round the um, parking plane, and I've just got to this point here, and I just remembered I just missed a really important step. Um, where you've got areas like this, where the the wing profile is coming down, is taping absolutely to nothing um, on the trailing edge. Yeah, what I found is with the first couple of times I did these moulds and I was playing around these moulds. It's very difficult to actually establish once you cast apart where that edge was. So what I've been doing since, and it's worked really well in the last the last um, mould I did, is I'll mark in where that point is. So I've got a point there, point there, and then you got this edge. It's a little bit more, it's a little easier to discern where, where the what you, happen, what, what you find is the, the flashing will come out you know, very, very thin and it's really hard <laughs> to find out where to make that trim. So what I've been doing is literally scoring it, okay, scoring the mould right at this early point, at this early stage. So, I'll, And I'll do it all the way across onto the parting plane. And that way, um, after sounding, I won't actually lose the registration too much and I can always re-score it in again and uh, need be. So just gently I'm gonna score down here. If you do it too fine, what you have to find is with, with the exacto knife, it, it closes up. Okay, so I've got the um, line scored in there. If I just put my finger over it, this will highlight a bit better. Zoom in on that. So if you can see that. Um, so I've, I've scored that line all the way across there, but then I've carried on all the way across here. So when I'm working and I lose that line, as long as I've got two registration points somewhere, I can drop the ruler back on and rescore it. So while we add it, I'll just do this a little bit here. And even if it actually puts a little a raised lip in the, um, the final cast piece, it, it, that, you know, it works really well because it, it gives you something really, it gives you like a, a line to follow when you're trimming the flashing off. Um, so far, these are the only two parts I've needed to actually put that in there, detail that in there, but um, 
Now that works really well. And I thought about using the same technique for doing panel lines later. Because actually, when you when you're scoring with the really thin blade, it's not, because it's not actually removing material. It's sort of separating the material, but the material sort of pushes up like that. So when you feel across there, you get a ridge. So I was wondering whether that would be enough to put panel lines in. But anyway, that's a that's another project in itself. So um, yeah, I'm going to carry on sounding now, and I'll catch up later.